The focus of this center is purely innovation. So while it's wonderful that women are taking new leadership in the political arenas or even as corporate CEOs and the like, what we're trying to spotlight is the innovative actions attributable to women. And why here in Alexandria, a small city, is because this is close to the nation's capital, but it as a community has a strong commitment to sharing history, good or bad, and the full story of our development as a community, as well as a commitment to diversity that recognizing all people and their rights and their potential contributions. is Associations Thrive, the podcast celebrating successful associations and their leaders. I'm your host, Joanna Pineda, CEO and Chief Troublemaker at Matrix Group International. Listen in as top association executives tell all, revealing the creative and innovative ways they're increasing membership, generating revenue, nurturing engagement, and reimagining their organizations. By the way, if you've launched a new initiative, created new member services, or updated your governance structure, and are seeing great results, I want to hear your story, and so do my listeners. I'd love to have you as a guest. Go to podcast.matrixgroup.net and apply to be on Associations Thrive. Now let's dive into this week's show. Today, I'm speaking with Jane Plitt. She's president of the National Center of Women's Innovations, or NCWI. Jane, welcome to the show. I'm thrilled to be here with you. Jane, tell us about NCWI. It's a thrilling group of men and women who are committed to recognizing the contributions of women innovators throughout our society and our history. Unfortunately, often they've been overlooked, underrecognized. And we are committed to use high-tech platforms in order to excite all ages with their stories, their contributions, and then use those stories to inspire youngsters who represent the future generation, and particularly young girls, so that they can see themselves as potentially pursuing careers in STEM fields. So, Jane, give us some examples of some of these women innovators that maybe have been lost to history or really deserve much more recognition. Our poster innovator, the woman we're going to be featuring, is Dr. Gladys West. And while all of us may use GPS, few of us know that we need to thank her because she was a Black mathematician who mapped the world. Tell me about this a little bit. What does it mean to have mapped the world? Yeah, Dr. West grew up on a poor sharecropper farm in Southern Virginia. She was determined that she didn't want to pick crops for the rest of her life and instead realized that education was the way that she could become a professional and not pick those crops. And it turned out she decided that mathematics, which was the most difficult field, would help distinguish her and allow her to succeed. We're talking about a period in the early 1950s, the Jim Crow era. And as a Black woman, she struggled to get hired by the government and worked for a number of years as a teacher, and then finally was hired at the Dahlgren Center, where she continued to work for 43 years. Before there were computers, she used her slide rule, 
and her own calculator, but ultimately became an expert in perfecting the analysis, which is not easy. It isn't like you just take a roller and you go from the satellite to Earth and go, oh, there it is. You have to, as I have learned, account for gravity and other forces. And that was the steadfast brilliance of Dr. West. She just hung in there. It initially was used by the military. And then that technology clearly was made available to all of us. Jane, that's amazing. So what you're telling us is that every time we get into our cars, we should thank Dr. West because her work on mapping the world is really what made GPS possible. And it's why hopefully few of us get lost these days. That's right. I am in awe of Dr. West. I do say thank you, Gladys, every time I safely arrive in a challenging location. But she isn't alone. Hedy Lamar, this gorgeous immigrant actress who is recognized for her beauty, few of us know that it was her brains that also need to be recognized because she came up with this concept during World War II when she was worried that the U.S. boats, submarines would be affected by torpedoes. Mm. Brilliant concept called frequency hopping. During the war, you could counter the directions for torpedoes not to be blocked by the enemy. Wow. She shared it. In fact, she patented it. She gave it to the Navy and they ignored it until the 1960s when we ultimately, they shared it with a mail run contractor who understood its power and then created Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. But these two women are just examples of how brilliant women have been in creating fundamental change for our society. Another Black doctor, Dr. Patricia Bath, created laser surgery for cataracts Wow! that many of us, as we age, use. And yet we don't know that it was her concept that came up for it. I also love the story of Vesta Stout. She worked in a factory packaging ammunition for World War II. She had two children in Europe who were fighting for the U.S. And she was nervous that the packaging was not firm and was worried that her sons might not receive the needed ammunition to survive. So she comes up with the concept for duct tape. Oh, no kidding. And she shares it with the factory owner and he ignores it. So she sends it to FDR and FDR sends it to the military and they embraced it. And we won the war and the ammunition arrived and we have duct tape. And duct tape holds the universe together. (laughs) So those are just very different examples of motivation, of innovation that women were and are capable of coming up with. This center is devoted to the idea that we need to recognize them and we hopefully will benefit from their stories by inspiring the next generation to solve all the problems and the diverse problems that we're facing. And that's the point. If we tap everyone's talent, then we are much more likely to solve issues. Yeah. Jane, let me ask you a question. So there are many initiatives to get girls involved in STEM. There are programs at universities. There's the Women's History Museum, you know, in D.C. So why a new organization and why now, why Alexandria? The distinctiveness of this center and each of those efforts and others are just wonderful as we document the story of women, whether they were in politics or whether they were in the service sector and the like. The focus of this center is purely innovation. Mm. So while it's wonderful that women are taking new leadership in the political 
arenas or even as corporate CEOs and the like. What we're trying to spotlight is the innovative actions attributable to women. And why here in Alexandria, a small city, is because this is close to the nation's capital, but it as a community has a strong commitment to sharing history, good or bad, and the full story of our development as a community, as well as a commitment to diversity that recognizing all people and their rights and their potential contributions. And at the same time, they have this unique innovation campus that they've established to help serve both the state of Virginia as well as the country and also a variety of companies like Amazon, Boeing, and the like. So what better location than in a community that has all those aspects? Because the focus of the center is not just on white women, but on women of all backgrounds. And the idea that they are innovators belongs here in this community. I love it. So when you talk about the Innovation Campus in Alexandria, you're talking about the new campus that is being built right here in Alexandria that's going to be the home of the new Virginia Tech campus that will open sometime later in 2023. Is that correct? It's actually going to open in the fall of 2024. 24. Okay. There's just this massive building and we're all kind of speculating about when it's going to open. (laughs) Yes. But there is a metro stop that's going to open. (laughs) I am super excited about this metro station because I live close to Ah. what will be the new metro station. It will be life-changing for me. (laughs) So... Jane, before we get into the things that you're doing at NCWI as a new organization, let's talk about your journey. So how did you get to become president of NCWI? It's got to be a great story. It was unintentional, as life often goes, but I'm a new resident of Alexandria. And as I was connecting with a number of people here, Many women of different ages were talking about their frustration that women weren't fully recognized. And it was at the same time that I was being pressured to help establish a museum for the woman I had written a biography about, Martha Matilda Harper. The opportunity suddenly dawned on me that. Martha, while she's extraordinary and I have devoted 25 years uncovering and promoting her story, that a single museum for a single woman doesn't meet the real need that we have. And that is for the broad brush appreciation of the spectrum of innovation in a number of fields that women have played a role in. I threw out that idea that what do you think about this concept that we create a center that does that? And everyone got really excited. And they said, let's do it. Nice. And then you, of course, will head it. I have agreed on a temporary basis. I am eagerly looking forward to a time when we can have paid staff and not just devoted, passionate people, but we're incredibly fortunate to have attracted a number of folks who care deeply that this concept be successful. So Jane, you're currently serving in a volunteer capacity with several other staff. So the organization was created when, and I think you've got a big launch coming up. So tell us about that. Yeah. The center began in October, 2022. As we began discussing and pursuing possibilities, it has come together rapidly and we are looking for our big national press launch October 27th, 2023, when Dr. Gladys West, 
the woman responsible for GPS will celebrate her 93rd birthday. Wow. So she's still alive. She is still alive. She is frail. Her family live nearby. She still lives in Dahlgren, Virginia. And we are looking for the opportunity for the whole nation to rally around this kickoff when not only will we have a gala, but we will unveil the first interactive exhibit, and it will be all about GPS and Dr. West. And we will also have accompanying it the STEM educational modules. And returning to your question about how are we different from all the support groups which are quite wonderful, geared into encouraging youngsters and girls to go into the field. What often is missing, in our opinion, is the personal story behind these educational modules. So that when you learn about Dr. West being a Black woman coming from poverty, deciding to pursue education instead of being limited to being a sharecropper, that provides dramatic inspiration, we believe, hmm, right? to encouraging girls, especially girls who are growing up in poverty, to say, if she could do it, then maybe I could. And what was her path? And how did she succeed? We are going to be featuring a number of different women of all backgrounds. So girls are going to be able to be inspired by both the story and then the STEM educational module. So how numbers, how math can help solve problems may be far more practical than we often learn in school when you wonder, this is also theoretical, but if they can begin to see how it fits together, then they may be interested in pursuing mathematics. Wow, that's amazing. So October 27th, there'll be the launch. There'll be a gala. I'll expect an invitation so that I can support you. You will get it. (laughs) So maybe fast forward to post-October 27, maybe two years from now, what will the center look like and what will your programs be? What are you envisioning? Well, what we're hoping is that these exhibits that we have will have the opportunity to travel to some major cities. And so people will be exposed not only when they come here to the nation's capital, but also to learn about these women. We will have hopefully STEM educational modules that will be able to be downloaded through our website. Nice. If I can just Put that www.womensinnovations.org. You will be able to download it and teachers and students would be able to benefit from those. And at the same time, there will be on that website an interactivity with the exhibits that we have. So there'll be the opportunity to come to the center and experience it, but there'll also be opportunity to discover it interactively around the world. And what we're planning on is this is not going to be a static exhibit. So while Gladys West and others will be the kickoff, every six months, we are going to have a different theme. So we'll be into aerodynamics, we'll be in communications, transportation, domesticity, and we'll learn and people will learn how ever present women have been in changing their lives. Now, Jane, when we were prepping, you said that there's a very interesting connection between Dr. West and the current Vice President Harris. So talk to us about that. Yeah. When you want to learn about what's behind people, It's either individuals or groups that have influenced them. And there is a prominent Black sorority, actually the largest in the world, Alpha Kappa Alpha, that Dr. West 
All of the three women mathematicians highlighted in hidden figures and our vice president of the United States are all members of this sorority. And the role it played in providing support, people can relate. It becomes a social network, but it was also a network that helped propel the accomplishment and the pursuit of success. And I love that it's being as influential today as it was back in the 1950s. We hear about how important the sorority was in mobilizing women to vote in this last election. Yes, absolutely. And in contributing. So are you trying to mobilize the sisters to support the center? We are. You figured it out. It's a very strong network. There's over 300,000 members. If everybody gave $5 or $10, can you imagine the revenue and the support? But we're also planning on recognizing the role of this sorority at the gala. It was a sorority sister who, having learned what Dr. West accomplished, began to urge the Air Force to recognize the accomplishment of Dr. West. And 20 years after she retired, she was inducted into their Inventors Hall of Fame. So never too late. But it came about because of Dr. West's connection to the sorority. Wow, amazing. Hey, speaking of support, how's fundraising and what's the landscape like these days? We are raising money from across the country and people who hear about it are contributing via our website and we are benefiting from professional groups like Matrix like Nixon Peabody providing our legal counsel and the like. There is locally in Alexandria a Spring to Action campaign that will be launched shortly. We are part of that. But we're also looking for major corporate support to underwrite the Dr. West exhibit and the um, STEM programs. And with that, to retain a lifetime identification with the exhibit and with the STEM programs. So we need major support, which I'm looking forward to. We're in that outreach stage right now. You know, it's from the bottom up. This is going to be a populist organization that as people start talking about it, the buzz just is spreading. And it's thrilling that people are saying, oh my gosh, of course this group needs to exist. Of course. What can we do to help? So that's very thrilling. Well, that's amazing. Jane, we will be sure to put in the show notes a link to the website and a link to the donate page so that other people can support your efforts. And listeners, be sure to visit the website to learn about these amazing women innovators, but also to learn about the event coming up in October and really kind of follow along as the center progresses. Thank you. Jane, I want to thank you so much for joining me today, for telling your story and for telling the story of NCWI. What an amazing journey. And I hope you'll come back maybe after the gala and give us an update on the campaign and on the progression of the center. We'd love that. Thank you so much. Thanks for listening to Associations Thrive. We're so glad to have you here. You know, my personal mission and the mission of my company, Matrix Group International, is to help associations and nonprofits increase membership, generate revenue, and thrive in the digital space. I want to hear stories of how your organization is thriving in today's challenging landscape. Please apply to be on my show by going to podcast.matrixgroup.net. By the way, do you need help with a digital initiative? Maybe it's a website redesign, a new membership database, or a hybrid meeting that you're planning. I'd love to connect with you. Please visit the Matrix Group website at matrixgroup.net. Thanks again for listening to this week's episode of Associations Thrive. Don't forget to subscribe to the show, leave a five-star rating, post a comment, and share it with your colleagues and friends. Bye.